everybody and welcome in to the atrium it's good to see your faces so you can see up here we've got our new custom gold bar made and it's finally code hey op welcome in it's good to see you i'm sorry to hear about your your 12 hour stream but uh do what you gotta do we are more than willing to wait but uh welcome in yeah so we got our gold bar made it took Forever. Like, way too much time. I was gone for like a week. I could not be found. Like, for nine days, I was not anywhere. But within coding systems, it was too much. But we got there. Uh, yeah, so that's exciting. And uh, today, we're going to be doing some art again. So let's jump on over there. Let me move myself into position. Little, little lower, I think. There we go. Much better. Okay, so we're back at the library scene. Let me start up our music. Here we go. Turn this down a bit because my music I make seems to be really loud. Okay, um... We've got some coloring to finish up, so let me go to these book layers. We'll just start a new one. Let me make sure. I'm on my randomizer brush. I'll select this color. How big is my brush? Kind of tiny. Okay, that size is better. Okay, so we'll work on these ones. Let me hide our plane. We can work on these, like, encyclopedias back here. Sure I'm on the right eraser too. It looks so good. I'm jealous so much. Well, thank you for the compliments. I'm working really hard on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think for art, all you need is a lot of practice because starting out, I was not that good an artist, um, but really in the last, um, well, it's three years now I've been practicing and really only since August that I've been practicing this style. So it took a lot of practice behind it. And I'm still trying to perfect the techniques behind it, but I'll take a compliment when I get it. Thank you. I don't have hand to do stuff like that. My hands shake a lot. Well, um, if you get 
stuff like Clip Studio and Procreate. Uh, if you're thinking more digital. Uh, they have these settings in here. For example, this is a... a wild brush. It's got no assistance on it. And if your hand's shaky, it can pick up the shakes. But there's these brush settings you can work with called stabilization that could help with it. Uh, so if you turn up like stabilization and stuff, it'll make it smoother. Like this brush here. This is my smoothed brush. And even if I'm kind of shaky with it, it still does pretty good. Like... There. But, uh, also, there's art forms where you can adapt, like, adapt to your limitations. So there can be some really, um, really great pieces. That can be done with a shaky hand. Let me pull- there's a specific artist I'm thinking of, so give me a second. I'm gonna pull up an example. this guy so hard to find? Sorry, it'll just be a moment. whenever I try to look this guy up. <laughs> um, I'm just getting a bunch of pictures of hands. They're not not good hands either.
This wouldn't be so hard if I could remember things. found him, goodness gracious, I took forever. His, no his name is Norman Eason. So let me, let me get his art up for you. He has what they call, um, like a chronic trimmer. For those of you who may not know, I'll put a picture up of him. Um, Okay, so this is Norman Eason. He's got, um, he's got a, a trimmer, which means he's very shaky. Uh, you can see some of his art pieces here in the background. Let me try to find some more of his work to display on the screen with him. Network called the National Trimmer Foundation. I forgot about this. Filled with artists, okay? Um, so let me put this up here. Uh, we'll just do a text, I think. Let's get this to fit the screen. Okay. So there's this place called the National Trimmer Foundation that has a whole bunch of artists who suffer from chronic trimmers. Let me uh, pull up their art. show another artist as well. Let me save her work here. So this is Tina Martin that I'm fixing to put on screen here too. A 
also a very talented painter. Who works with the National uh, Tremor Foundation. So don't let things like tremors uh, prevent you from doing the things you want to do. There are ways around it and there are support networks filled with some great individuals uh, who have been through the, you know, the, the trials of learning art with their, with their tremors. And they do have a Facebook um, and a Twitter group. So let me put up their their links up here. So anyone who's interested or feels they would like to just um, get into the community or look at some great art, uh, this is their Twitter. So yeah, the, it, it is possible, is what I'm saying. If you have a, um, you know, a condition where you shake frequently, you can still uh, do things like uh, art. Like these are, uh, specifically are painters, but uh, there are ways you can uh, you can still do art like the condition doesn't have to be a barrier i guess that's what i'm saying and also there's a group of artists out there that are, will be more than willing to help you learn and give you the the tips that help them so yeah i think that's important let me see if i can i'll put these on screen I think down here we'll cover up the welcome message. And I'll leave these guys up on screen for the rest of the... for the rest of the stream. And I'm also going to leave this, um, this text up for anyone who... Who feels like they may need it. Let me make sure this is on top. We'll put it right there. Let me also see about putting a background color. There you go, that'll let it stand out a little easier. Um, so yeah, definitely check out these artists if you guys got the time. And go check out the National Tremor Foundation. Um, and uh, don't ever let like any physical condition hold you back from the things you want to do. Because there are ways around them and there are people who will be willing to help you get around those barriers. Alright, uh, enough of that. I got to get back to my own. My own art. Let's see, where was I? Let me delete this layer that I'm not using. Ooh, this one's vibrant. I like it. It's a book about skeletons that's bright red. I love that. You know, Oz is streaming, um, Honkai Star Rail, if she's still streaming at the end of, um, 
at the end of our stream here, we might go Raider. Just because she is the librarian at the edge of the universe, so I think she'd really enjoy the library piece of uh, our text. That one's too close in color. Let's try again. Nope, still too close in color. Still, oh, I'm on the wrong brush! <laughs> that makes so much sense, okay. There we go. And also a very magenta book about animals. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and do these encyclopedia books. The reason why I'm working on these books in particular is because they only need one color. Uh, these books, like here, are going to have two colors, and these ones here are going to have a very specific kind of color scheme. So I'm just getting the random ones um, out of the way first. Go ahead and raise this back a little. This one's bright red too. I'm on the eraser still. What a nice gold color. I like that color. Like a mustard. Looks like there's one book there on the edge I still have to get, so let's do that. Okay, I can merge all these. See, now I've got a problem because I could tell these newer books are more saturated than the other ones. Let's do this. Whoops. Get the free hand. Look, these other ones. Let's bump up the saturation on them. And then I think also we'll take these ones and turn the saturation on these ones down a little. Just so they kind of match. I will lurk for now. Okay, Opie. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you.
I forgot about this little group right here. I need to turn up their saturation. That kind of matches with the others. And it still looks like the saturation's not completely even. So let's get our selector. These two and these two specifically. I think we need to bring down the, the brightness a bit. Okay, yeah, I think those match a little better. Okay, let's get these other bugs out of the way. So these ones need to be all one color. Let's do like this uh, pink color. And that's it for the top part here. And I'll just get down the colors for now. The, um, the details we'll add later. I'm just doing my flats real quick. For the main parts of the books. Then we'll do this brighter red part for this one. Okay, I think that's good. I'll leave those separate for now until I feel more comfortable with whatever's going on there. And then we've got these like technical books back here. I think in the original, let me go back to the original. I like their color theme. Okay, they were white in the middle with red border and golden details. Let's get white. Really, it's only going to be this one here. Do I have my... Oh, I don't have my paper texture. This is looking really blue for some reason. Probably because it's up against a bunch of other colors that just make it look blue. Okay, and then we'll get the red. Kind of clean up these edges here. Okay, yeah. And again, I'm going to leave those separate till I'm a bit more comfortable.
Okay, that seems to be all the base colors. Let me turn the sketch off real quick. That's the... The wrong one. This is the one. Okay, so... The books that are different colors don't need line work to them to differentiate their spines, which is what I'm looking for. So we just need to do it on the books that are the same colors. And then we'll move into spine detail for some of these. Some of these pieces. It's going to be a bunch of working on books this episode. I hope you guys are cool with that. Start with these ones in the corner. Turn this down to two. I think I need to turn it down a little more. Down a bit. Pretty five's good. I love this song. I love all the songs I've done that are song sister themed. I think I'm gonna do a whole album on it just because I redid the BRB song to be themed around this, and it just makes me feel so good to make and to listen to. Let's go turn this off real quick. Yeah, I think that's good. It gives some definition in the spine. But not too much. So I'm okay with this. Let's move on to the other set. Really, it's only the red I need to focus on because you can't see most of the white. some details in here. I also need to add details to like um, this uh, this whole section of books right here. We'll add some spine to them. Maybe we'll just go through and add them to all the books. But first, let me do this. Let me grab a faint warm yellow. And then behind all the books where we see the tops, we need to add pages.
we'd really be seeing a bunch of the top of these. So I need to get that in. Then we'll get it lined out when we do the details. And I need to extend that green out too, because you're going to be seeing more of that, that book there. Also, I need to change the, the tops of these books. This line brush was upside down. So their tops are down there. And we've established with the rest of the books on the shelf, you'd be seeing the top. So we're gonna get this in. Since they're a little taller, we're only gonna be seeing a little bit of them. But then I need to come down here to this book layer and change the curve. more consistent. Let me go ahead, since I'm on this layer, let's get this green. And then let me kind of erase it back into position. Yeah, like that. Thanks. Nice, 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 nice. do a clipping layer. Let me get the grays. And let's do some line detail real quick. The appropriate brush size. And I think actually instead of gray it needs to be the color of the book because we're gonna be having like those two spines up against each other. So instead of this clipping layer, let me just kind of add it to this book spine layer. Let's come up here. We'll do the same thing where we add the shell of the book as the dividers. This one's going to be almost perfectly straight because it's almost straight with the center of the focal point. And then we'll do the same thing for this, but it's a little more different because we need to get two colors in. To mark where the, the two books are different. And since this book kind of ends at the corner there, we'll need to put a little bit of a corner there. Let me finish filling in this corner.
And then these books down here. I almost forgot about them. Okay, and I think that's it for those. Let's go ahead and start with some spine details. Gonna do white for the font of these. Get this peep shape in. And then since they're all the same book name, I'm just going to copy them over. To the other spines. Once I'm done with this one. Let me take off the clipping mask portion here. I'm gonna do clipping mask here real quick. Get in some little detail, I guess, just there. I'm gonna merge these and then we're gonna put them on the other covers. I need to make sure that this is under them. those there. Let's see. Something went awry here. Oh, that's why this is on a clipping mask now. There we go. Hey, okay, I'm going to merge all these down. And let's get the fake number of things in. Okay, and then we'll get the, the friend group down here. Just gonna merge those. We need to be above this layer. They gotta be like anime inspired, so. Bright colors. We get a nice 
uh, skin tone going. I also need to erase that down better. And because everything's so pink, I need to change the color of this blush tone to be more saturated to match the color. This next person's behind her. Gotta love a good series of books where their spines all make one picture. Grab this color and then we'll um, adjust accordingly. How you doing? Welcome in. Good to see you. I hope your day's been pleasant. We're uh, working on some art today in Procreate. We're doing a library scene. So I'm working on the spine of these comics. Uh, here in the corner right now. It's good to see your face here in the atrium. My name's Olo. Would you like for me to call you a uh, hacks or do you prefer full hacks man? Let me know. I will adjust accordingly. We're gonna make this one white haired. Tell me what you like. I don't care much. Okay, sounds good. I will do that then. There we go. Did you like uh, watching or reading manga and uh, other assorted comic books when you were growing up? Or currently even? Because that's what's in this piece. It's like an homage to the young nerd in this corner. I need to get... I think I'll just do it on one layer. Not really into manga? That's okay. But a lot of people are. Maybe like this one? Let me turn down my brush again. And we'll just get in 
slight details. Then I think I'll turn them down a bit. Let me turn off my sketch. What kind of art are you into? I like this kind of art style. Thank you. It took some practice to get it uh, to work. Now that I have this layer turned off, or the sketch layer, it looks so friendly. Thank you. I like giving people cozy feels, so if it's coming off friendly, then it's doing the right thing. There we go. Nice clean edge. That's better. I think that's all the detail I'll put over there. It's like one corner. Um, I'm going to merge all these down. I'm gonna use two. And let's work on the detail in some of these. Multiply. Do you do any art? Or do you, um, are you just an enjoyer of art? Let me see. Let's turn this layer back on. Reminds me of uh, Walton Files in some parts, which isn't very friendly, but still. I'm just an enjoyer of art. Well, good to have you. Good to have enjoyers of art and artists alike. Gotta color this rat. a nice chocolate coat. Oh, let's do the chocolate, but like the beans thing where they have um the little white spot over their over their noggins. Fill this up. Let's get this little white spot. Let's do it like over the eyes. Am I? I need to be on a normal layer. That's what's going on. I forget with multiply, if you try to do white, it erases the, uh, the layer under that you're working on. It's like a Photoshop masking layer where white hides what you're working on on that layer. Maybe like this. A nice shape. this off, I think. Well, copy paste. And then erase it off of the multiply layer. Yep, just like that. Get this little pink nose. Cute little pink bean nose. doing art by it here in the next month or two and then maybe for October we'll do a different art challenge last year we did Rattober where we did took part in beans um, uh, Rattober where we drew some rats for Rattober 
but maybe we'll find another artist challenge to take part of. I'll see what my friends are into. Maybe we can do it together, that'd be fun. Uh, speaking of Walton files or analog horror in general, yeah, are you uh, an enjoyer? Have you watched analog horror series? Um, I haven't watched them. Hey, Cryptic, welcome in. Good to see you. Um, analog horror series. I haven't watched them that haven't been in a reaction format. I've watched people react to them, but I haven't watched them plainly myself. But I am a fan of, um, watching people play, uh... Oh, what's that? What's that? Game. I'm gonna have to look it up real quick. I know it when I see it. This makes me feel so bad because I was literally watching Markiplier play it this morning. My brain really ought to be better than this. I'm sure you've seen it if you're a fan of analog horror. It's a video game that's like spot the difference. But you're basically in tr control of the CCTV and you have to report the anomalies as weird things happen or there's subtle changes in the environment. I can't remember the name of it. Why is it escaping me? Because I'm on the spot. Observation duty. Thank you. So, um... I do like watching people play Observation Duty and stuff. And there was that, um, that movie recently that came out that was also, like, analog horror. Analog horror isn't a game. Have you seen the, um, have you seen, um, Observation Duty? Because that shares a lot with analog horror YouTube series. I think it borrows a lot of the same aesthetics. Are they technically different genres? I think so? Okay. Then I will clarify myself. The name sounds familiar. Let's get just a darker brown for the ear tape. There we go. Uh, but I'm speaking of analog horror on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I've, um, I've heard and seen some things about it. Whenever people react to it. Like the Mandela Catalog. Yeah, I've, I've seen people react to the Mandela Catalog. Specifically, Local 58. Yeah, that's that fake, um, not fake, but it's the, the fictional channel, um, that follows that reporter. I remember that one. Um... The Walton Files. I haven't seen the Walton Files, but I've seen the Mandela Catalog reactions and I've seen Local 58 reactions. So, I'm familiar with some of it, but not all of it. Let me also see the name of that movie that came out that was based on those series, too. Because it was really divisive. There was a lot of people that enjoyed it and a lot of people that did not enjoy it. And it's technically not analog horror, I believe, but it is, it does borrow a lot of the same techniques. Skin -a rink There you go. Skin -a rink That's the, the movie I was thinking of. But yeah, 
Yeah, I'm familiar. Uh, what about them? I haven't heard of that one. I might check it out later. Yeah, it was, um... I think it was one of those in-select theaters kind of movies. But, um... If you're a fan of analog horror, you might like Skidamarink. You might not, though. There, like I said, a lot of people found it to be... Either it was one of the most horrifying things they watched, or it was one of the most boring things they've watched and like there's no in between I haven't seen any in between where they're like yeah that was just an okay movie it was either one or the other whoops did not have an end close I guess goodness okay let's close it off up here nope there we go I'm not um, an avid watcher of horror stuff, but I do appreciate how analog horror has really become like this incredible genre. This, like, it's a really artistic genre of horror, and it takes a lot of a lot of thought and planning behind it. It really builds on that. Um, what they call the thrill, I guess, like a thriller. It, it builds up the tension in a very good manner. Let's work on skeleton bro. Skelly bro. Merge down the rat. Get our yellowy bone color. That's one of those things that I don't just watch for my own enjoyment, but I do appreciate the artistic stuff that has to go behind it. But for those of you who are fans of horror, you should definitely check out like all those series that Hacks had uh, talked about. Uh, Mandela Catalog was my first entry into the analog horror scene. And I think it, the way I came to it was um... One of the YouTubers that I usually watch um, reacted to a bunch of Mandela catalog videos. So that's how I got introduced to it. And that breaks a lot of the tension, of course, whenever you're watching like reactors instead of the actual piece. So if you're, um, if you're fragile, like me, you can always uh, check out the reactors, but if you want the full horror experience, go straight to the source. My first uh, entry to analog horror was Petscop. Back then, I didn't even realize it was called analog horror. You know, I've heard of that. I've heard of Petscop, but I haven't seen it for myself. But whenever I hear people talking about the analog horror scene, that one does come up a lot. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna do half of this, and then I'm going to copy paste it to the other half. Petscop is pretty old analog horror. It'd be interesting to see, like, what was the first, technically speaking, the first analog horror. Because there's always something that's like the first, and then there may be something else that like defines the genre. So it's like, okay, which one was the first, and which one was the one that defined the genre? But sometimes those are separate things. Sometimes they're the same. six years old okay gotcha I know um like um 
Local 58. Let's see, I came into that before... before lockdowns were a thing. So it's been at least four years for Local 58. If you're, um, if you're also a fan of podcast and like a slow drip of information about a, like a different world that's got some weird problems to it, you might like the podcast Welcome to Night Vale. Not a horror or anything by any means, but it is set in a fictional world where weird things happen in this middle of nowhere-esque kind of town. And you slowly get some nice tasty lore. And it's really soothing. Oddly soothing. But that one's definitely not, like I said, definitely not a horror. get through this uh, bone here and then we'll we'll do a quick care break. I'm, I'm feeling kind of thirsty. said that I'm just gonna finish I'm gonna go I'm gonna finish the skeleton I'm sorry I'm bad at caring for myself and then while I'm doing some self-care I'll do some shout outs for my friends that have stopped in because I like supporting their faces are you streamer hacks because if you are I'll give you a shout out too Cheats for days. Okay. Let's um do a quick care break. Everyone, feel free to take care of yourselves with me. We're gonna do uh, a big old stretch. I'm not a streamer, but I have a YouTube channel. Okay. Um, so I can't do the shout out that I was going to do. I don't think it works for YouTubers. So let's do stretch together. Is your YouTube channel the same um, same username as yours? I'll let you I'll let you shout it out, and I'll give you a shout out here. What kinds of things do you do on your channel? All right, let's do a hydrate real quick. Now we're nice and hydrated. Let me pause my music. Let's shout out OP first. I forgot she changed her changed her name recently. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, I don't know. That's one crazy donkey. Cryptic is still on that donkey. <laughs> what? 
Oops. Oops. For those of you who don't know, Opie, um, Opie was not speaking in that clip. Opie is a silent streamer, but she does have some great friends that like to hang out with her. So go check her out if you've got the chance. And we'll shout out Cryptic. Thank you for coming in. Always good to see your face. I was not stupid. Oh, look, look. new space friends. Oh, thanks for the thanks for the follow. Thank you so much. I need to. Um, I need to update my thing. Why do I always forget that this thing exists? Hold on, I'll get you updated into our newest space friend. Cryptic was on that donkey. <laughs> that's that's funny. So we got basically two cryptic um, clips is what I'm hearing. Uh, stream labels, please and thank you. We need to let our world know who our new space friend is. Let me group these things up. Okay, we're going to move those down below our alerts because those are covering all our alerts. There we go. Thanks, Hacks, for becoming a space friend. It's always good to have new space friends around. You seem like you're a very enjoyable character. There we go. Everything seems to be in place. Cryptic got lucky with a double shout out. There we go. Let's also turn our music back on. Let me make sure I'm not going to blast out your ear holes here. And we'll get the darker color. You know, I feel like we'll just do that for the teeth, because I feel like everyone does black for the nose and the eye sockets. On skeletons, and if we're relying on visual shorthand here, we might as well just go all the way. Orbises. Get some nice orbises in here. Hey, Drev, welcome in. Damn, really need some meat on their boats. Well, this guy does, that's for sure. Let me give you a shout out, too. I just got done shouting out some of my friends, but we need to shout out our favorite semicircle. Get that turned down. At Drevotion. Hey, Fruity Loops. Nice. That's not bad. It's actually not a bad thing. I don't know why, but it has finally chosen a mute clip after ages. <laughs> well, I don't know if you could call it mute. You did speak in the last two seconds. I had to say something. <laughs> yeah, there we go. But that was a that was a good song. Is that for something in particular? Or were you just working on making a cool beat? Because sometimes I'll do that just for fun. I'll just make a random song. Just for the heck of it. And since I've shouted out my friends, I'm going to summon the flock. 
It's not showing for some reason. I got hit. Alright, I restart it. I'll restart it. We'll see if that fixes it. Oh, is that why? By the way, there's a feature on VTube Studio where you can have emotes and chat fall down. I didn't know that. Let me let me add that to my things to do list. Get my my fancy pen. I have to go because I'm kind of busy. So bye everyone. Bye Pax. Thank you for stopping by. I will go try to find your YouTube channel after this. Best part is that it's not a paid feature, really. Okay, let me put down BTS e-boats. There we go. I'll look into it. figured out the problem. Yep, that was the problem. Give me a second. I know how to fix this. stream without some scuff. I almost got away with it. Until I was reminded that uh, I need to double check a lot of stuff. Here we go. Okay. Now that that's up and running. There we go. For those of you who don't know, each of those ducks is a space friend that has helped me out tremendously and has been very supportive. So I appreciate them very much. Okay, let's get back to this. What is this? Oh, that's Shadow. Okay. That's what happens when you don't name your layers, but I'm too many layers deep to start renaming them now. What color should this flower be? I guess we'll do like a... Imagine helping the space oil couldn't be my habit. Yeah, it couldn't be, uh, couldn't be any of, uh... Anyone here who's, like, supporting me right now or anything. Like always. Could not be those people. Surely not. Imagine helping a Golobian. The nerve of some people. 
with weirdos. A lot of them. All of them. here. By the way, I forgot to, I forgot to check. Did my goal bar? Oh, the goal bar worked. We got our new space friend and now we're 90% of the way there. Oh, I'm so happy it actually worked. Now we just need to see. There's a special thing that's supposed to happen when the goal is met. So we'll see if that actually happens. some greenery under them, some form or another. Let's get another green for the other leaf. I said check soy this morning. So, okay, I don't judge me, but I listen to Bardcore, which is basically, <laughs> it's what it sounds like, okay? It's like D&D &D music, like tavern kind of myth, medieval kind of mythical sounding stuff. And so I get some recommendations every now and again, will come across my, my recommendation feed and, uh, this morning it was hardcore DK rap and it was everything I'd hoped it'd be it was perfect and I sent it to Jexoy this morning and he <laughs> he also found it to be just the best for those of you who've never given hardcore singing specifically it has a good humor to it that I enjoy. Let's do orange for the cover. It's such a dull cover. Let's give it some vibrancy with the squiggles. Also with these words. Okay, and then let's add details to the flower. a barred core and I'm proud it's really something else and out of 10 would recommend I don't know if we'll get done with this piece today like I thought I would I might okay I still have some time I might I underestimated the amount of work I had left. That's for sure. Let me erase away where I got over the line there. Let's also uh, do the same thing with the Green.
Okay, and then I'm just gonna merge them down. Let's also do the words on these now that I'm here. Maybe we can get the gold writing. Yeah, that'll work. On all these, and I'll kind of set them like a series. There we go. Merge all those down. I'll go ahead and merge them down. Completely. Let me just make sure there's nothing to be done over there. I think we're good for that uh, section of books for now. I got some care. Thank you. Thank you, SBG, for looking out for me. Let me, um... Let's do that. Let's, um... Let's do our stretch. Feel free to stretch with me. Ooh, that felt nice. Nice, good stretch. And, uh... Drink some water with me, good friends. Stay nice and hydrated. Even if it's procreate, you can save the drawing. I will try for you. Um, that's basically all I have to do is back out and go back in and it saves it. All right, so it's nice and saved. Thank you for um, keeping me on track for caring for myself and thanks for the lurk. I hope you have a good chill time. Just hanging out. I should probably also decorate the book in her hands. I wasn't going to at first, but I don't like the look of having everything decorated now. I need to, um... Do a new layer. And we'll work on these ones over here. These ones I think we'll just make word things, like fake little word things. Fake little word titles. Let me just kind of distort this to where it fits the book better. And the angle. with this here. Oops, I need to just move this bit, please. down the opacity of them. Out there. Okay, I do have these that I need to fix up behind her directly, but I think I'll do that um, at another time. Let's see, these ones have specifics too, so let's come down here. I think I will do this mirror in like the gold.
We'll go ahead and do the name in it. Like so. And then that's supposed to be like a silhouette. So let's get this dark color. Is that dark? Click the wrong one. I think I need to go ahead and do like a white behind that so that it's like glass. Okay, then let me just get some details in on the handle here. on the platypus and of course it has to be an homage all right it just has to be we'll get the brown tail i need a teal color This orange color again. Okay, then we'll get all the words in here. like the bottom part's just the top part flipped so let's get that copy paste flip and place we'll merge all those down let's do a different title we'll do this one in black for this one gray color so it's like silver for the binding decor
Okay. I just need to... For some reason... The detail on this binding got erased. So let's put that in. And then maybe I'll put in... Let's just do black and let's put in... The random stuff in these areas to add intrigue. I'll go ahead and add a new layer. I think I'll go in and I'll lower the opacity on these. Also gonna come in here, maybe add a little detail. just kind of have these ones back here. I think we're done with the line details. And then we can move on to finalizing the shading and stuff. So in the original, these were white. And that's kind of what I'm going to go with. Hmm, why is that erasing this layer? Make sure we're on a normal. Is my opacity up? Why? Oh, that's why. It's on the clipping mask of the wrong layer. Okay. There we go. Just grab the gray, add some line separation. And then I'm gonna duplicate this over because this is like the the publisher title. No. I just wanna I wanna move it over. Thank you. 
Maybe I'll do it one more time because of this far one over here. Stop that. those down and then I had gold for the images but you're really not going to be seeing them here that's fine we'll just get that one in okay I'm gonna merge these down and let's get the shading in I'm gonna turn this up and turn this to normal so I can get the color. Okay. So now that I have the color, I can get rid of this. Let's turn up our brush a bit for shading purposes. And we'll do some shading. Oh, I need to turn the airplane back on. I can get some uh, light direction in my noggin. Whenever I get over to that part. this color. And we're going to finish painting where the golden light hits the books. I'm going to turn up my brush because basically all of these here are going to be bathed in the light. down a little bit more. This one here is going to be hit with it. And I think the tops of these... Not really, because the light hits here on the... up there on the, um, the ledge. So we're going to... this is going to be in shadow. But the tops of these might have uh, a little bit. Okay, let's go back to the shadow layer. I didn't save that color. These are going to be in shadow. I think I need to come up here and we'll just finish covering these. Because that's the way I've lit the shelf. That's the way we'll light the books. Okay, I think we're good on most things. I think I just need to do some general after effects. So 
Let me come in here. Let's get our dark color. A dark color, I should say. We'll kind of make this part of the canvas darker. Let me go ahead and turn up the filling again. And we'll turn it down and I'm going to blur that edge. So that it's not as obvious. That way the center of attention refocuses back on the girl on the plane because eyes are normally drawn to the brighter parts of the image. So we'll get that in. And just so you can see like kind of the before and after and see how that affects your, your eyes view of the situation. I think we'll turn it up a bit more. some like dust speckles. Let me get over to like a speckle brush. We'll do this texture and mist brush we used on Reaper. Turn the size way up. I think that's a little too dense. But we'll just do it kind of around the, the plane where the light captures captures the dust and then let's erase away we turn up my eraser erase away where it's dark because you wouldn't see the dust in the shadow so we'll get everything that's not in the light erased away Okay, and then I think I'm going to... Okay, that's already on that layer, so... I need to refix that to where they're not on the same layer. We'll do copy-paste, reselect the thing, and clear it from this one so I can... That erased everything. There we go. So I can adjust this as its own layer. Kind of turn it down to where it's only a little noticeable. Very, very minor detail, but I enjoy minor details. Okay, I need to think if there's anything else I want to add or if I think it can benefit from anything else. Color adjustments and such. I think I'm going to darken the cubbies a bit more. I think that'll be good. I need to add, or I'm going to, I don't really need to, but I'm going to add another shadow layer. Let me make sure I'm on my brushes again. And it's going to be to these sides here of the shelf that have kind of a shadow along them, because they're not at the front. Those are really the only two that do that. Um, change this to multiply. And then I think I just need to clean up like this edge a bit. So you kind of know it's the 
that shelf side there we're seeing. Yeah, it just helps add more definition. Okay. I need to make it not as dark as the background, but dark enough to where it's different. And I think perspective wise, we're actually gonna be seeing a little bit of this wall here. So let's um, grab the light and just kind of do a line, like that light's hitting that back corner there. That back shelf, oh, the flock. It's really stuck on my head, get off. There we go. There we go. To lurk. Okay, Opie, thank you for the, the flock. I always love seeing it. But I think I'm done with this piece. Can't really think of anything to add to it. Okay, I think we're done. Let me um come back here. I'll just add a little line here just so we're more uniform. There we go. So yeah, I think we're uh, I think we're done with this. So this is the new and improved library piece, library 2.0. Oh, I'm not done with it. I remembered. I've got to add details to this book. Real fast, real fast. I need to add details to this book. Um, which layer is it on? Here it is. We'll do the same gold as the plane. Whoops, I need to lower this. Add in some fake script. I'm gonna distort it so that the angle matches. And I'm going to warp it. So it looks like it's following the, the book. And I'm going to make sure it's underneath the shadows and light. And let's add like a hint to the next piece. So it'll be A dragon. Tail wouldn't be quite that big on this specimen. And then let me do the whoop. Do the distort so it's with the book shape. There we go. And then since I did that, I need to add some more information. Okay, now we're done. So this is our finished piece for the day. Of course, I'll be posting it like on the socials and stuff later. But yeah, it's looking good. I think I like it better. So the original one, it was okay. This is the original. And it's a good piece, but I like 
the composition of this one better. This one feels better with me than the other one. Let me get this paused. Let me put away my pen. Give me pen. Okay, pen's gonna stay with me for a bit. Let's go over to chat. Go. Okay. Uh, let me find a friend to raid. Let's see who's doing what today. Thank you for the stream. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate it when you stop in and chat with me. Just gives me a nice time hanging out with good people. Oh, I have a lot of friends on. Okay, let's see. Who do I want to raid today? Taking a second. Give me a second, guys. Let's see, is Oz? Yes, we have to raid Oz so I can get her the library themed art tax. It's just how it goes. I'm not I'm not the person who makes these um who makes these decisions. It's just when you have anything to do with the library, you have to take it to the librarian at the end of the galaxy. Okay, so we're gonna be raiding our friend Ozzy Cypher today. But I want to thank everyone for coming by and hanging out with me as we did art. Tomorrow we'll be back with uh, FL Studio. And then uh, we'll be doing some just fiddling around in music. Just doing whatever I feel like, I guess. But that's it for today. So until next time, have fun, space friends.